Farmer Peters gave a big yawn as he awoke with the heat of the sun shining down on his face. Quite unusually, he had not been disturbed at an unthinkable hour by the sound of old man Peters chasing Larney away from the breakfast table once again. He looked down at his bedside, and there was Larney and Spud, closely cuddled up together. Wake up, you two, murmured Farmer Peters, as he leapt out of bed like a small child on Christmas Day morning. Today is my big day. I tell you what, when I win, I would take us all away on holiday to a nice hot country. I'm not too keen on the heat, muttered Spud, sounding especially grumpy as he was still half asleep. I'd be scared I'd bake. Oh, you need to lay in the sun long enough to truly appreciate it, Lani replied. After all, a cat is quite happy to sit in the sun sleeping for hours upon hours. But we have to win it first, said Farmer Peters excitedly. And to win it, we have to be there. So chop chop, let's get a move on. But, Spud interrupted, there really is something you should know. Something happened last night. Not now, Farmer Peters replied, placing Larney on one shoulder and Spud on the other. There will be plenty of time for chit-chat after the awards. Larney looked at Spud, and his expression was one of nervousness. Clearly he was quite concerned by the knockings on the floorboards that they had both heard the night before. However, she did not want to worry Farmer Peters on such an important day for him, so decided to remain quiet for the time being. Now Farmer Peters' main mode of transport was a horse with a small wagon behind it, which he used to transport his crops from his home to the nearby village. He placed Larney and Spud inside the wagon, checking that they were both comfortable, before mounting the horse and quickly, but safely, riding them to the Amesmouth Village Square, where the awards were being held. Farmer Cooper was already there, setting up his stool. Farmer Peters looked over suspiciously, as it was clear that his rival was hiding something from the sight of all the other competitors. Farmer Cooper caught the sight of the wagon approaching, and immediately diverted his attention from his secret entry so that he could hoarsely utter, Oh look, here comes Peters with his usual embarrassing effort. What is it this time? An orange that isn't orange? The gathered crowd laughed, with no one laughing more loudly than old man Peters, who was somewhat of a good friend of Farmer Cooper's. In fact, he had arrived early at the fair in the early hours of the morning to see what wonder Farmer Cooper would be displaying this year. Don't worry about me, Farmer Peters called back. You should be more concerned about how your face will look once I've wiped that smug grin off of it. Now, there was a particularly good turnout this year on account of the recent hot weather, with most of the local farmers participating. Farmer Jackson with his miniature beetroots, Farmer Collins with a very pretty array of flowers, Farmer Cosby displaying some of the deepest red and most succulent looking tomatoes you could ever see, and a particular favourite of the locals, a humorous turnip that looked like a bottom which had been submitted by Farmer Poggles. However, nothing was getting as much attention and applause as Farmer Peter's most enormous potato. Well, I never, said one unlocker. You could feed a family for a week with that single potato. Spud grimaced but remained silent. Although he did not much like the idea of being diced and served up for dinner. Here, said another onlooker. This one is as funny as old Poggle's bottom turnip. It looks like it's got a face and all. Spud remained silent. The judges were the same highly respected members of the local community that hosted the awards every year. Firstly, there was Lord Bainley, a squat little fellow with the most pronounced posh voice, a bold head and a jungle-like pair of eyebrows. By his side was Nurse Squib, with her biceps the size that most bodybuilders would be proud of but with a particularly sizable mole on the left of her face, with two long hairs protruding out of it and blowing against each other in the wind as if they were in combat. Finally, there was Reverend Brownbeard, a less than apt name for this man, 
as he did have a long beard, but it was actually the brightest of ginger. Despite being a man of the cloth, he was renowned for his loud cursing and fist-waving at every child or animal that came into his view. As the judges approached Farmer Peter's display stand, it was immediately clear that they were far more impressed by the large potato than anything that they had seen so far. Well, I never, uttered Lord Bainley. This is the most wondrous vegetable I have ever seen. He picked it up and felt it in his hands. Spud tried desperately not to laugh, even though it tickled. I am impressed, Lord Bainley added. A significant improvement from the hard carrots from last year. Out of the corner of his eye, Farmer Peters noticed that Lord Bainley was pencilling in a big tick against the word winner on his score sheet. Yes, I agree, said Nurse Squib, nodding frantically. She took Spud from Lord Bainley and held him right up against her face. So close, in fact, that the two hairs on her mole rubbed against Spud's body, tickling him even more. Still, however, he managed to contain his laughter. Again, Farmer Peters could clearly see that Nurse Squib was jotting down on her score sheet that this was the winning entry. Oh my, Reverend Brownbeard added, it's almost got a face. With that, he also took hold of Spud and looked closely at him. The hairs from his long beard again tickling the poor potato, who this time could not help but give out a small giggle. <laughs> With that, Reverend Brownbeard dropped poor Spud on the floor. Farmer Peters gasped, worried that the judges may have heard Spud's accidental outburst, and of course also that the fall may have been a bit painful for his new friend. But it was not the giggle that had shocked Reverend Brownbeard, but the sound of cheering that was coming from the large group of onlookers gathered around Farmer Cooper's stand. The three judges rushed over to get a clearer view. Through the wonders of science, Farmer Cooper shouted quite dramatically, I bring you the wonder of my toffee apples. As the crowd gasped, Farmer Cooper continued, No longer do you need to spend the time coating apples with toffee and piercing them with a stick, as these beauties grow on the tree with a natural coating of sticky caramel and ready for the eating. There was another loud cheer, and none louder than the cheer emanating from old man Peter's mouth. What are we to do? murmured Lani quietly, raising a paw in the direction of the judges, who appeared to be altering their score sheets. Farmer Peter stood there speechless. Spud, who had now gathered himself up off the floor and onto the display stand, looked over at his master, whose bottom lip was quivering with sadness. We have a clear winner, Lord Bainley pronounced loudly, which was followed by another cheer from the crowd. Farmer Cooper looked over in Farmer Peter's direction with a big smug grin on what was always a fairly annoyingly smug looking face. Lord Bainley continued, This year's winner of the annual Amesmouth Farmers Fair is... There was a tense silence as the crowd excitedly waited for Farmer Cooper's name to be shouted out, as it was pretty much every year. Looking up again at poor Farmer Peter's sorrowful expression, and without truly thinking through the consequences, Spud suddenly shouted with the most ear-deafening voice, BAG ME! The crowd gasped, turning around collectively in the direction of Farmer Peter's display stand. BAG ME! Spud screamed again. In unison, the three judges dropped their pencils with their mouths open wide in deep shock. I am best served baked, Spud announced in a slightly quieter voice. With that, everyone raced over towards Farmer Peter's stand, leaving just old man Peter's standing next to a suddenly deflated Farmer Cooper who could only utter a very weak, Would someone like to try a toffee apple? Thinking quickly, Farmer Peters picked up Spud and hoisted him in the air. Clearly and loudly he exclaimed, Through the wonders of science, partly if truth be told as a mocking reference to Farmer Cooper's earlier announcement, I present for you the world's first speaking potato that can tell you 
how best to cook him. Make me and cover me in cheese, Spud added. The crowd gasped and let out a cheer. Are there more of these? Nurse Squib asked excitedly. I have a whole crop of them, Farmer Peters replied. Of course this was a lie, as the rest of the crop had mysteriously disappeared. But he would worry about that later. Ask the potato, and it will tell you if it is most suited to roasting, boiling, baking, mashing, or frying. This is most brilliant, Reverend Brownbeard declared. A wondrous science indeed. The three judges conferred together for a brief moment, before unanimously shouting out, And the winner is Farmer Peters and his talking potato. The onlookers cheered loudly, the noise so deafening that you could only faintly hear the distressed cries of Farmer Cooper gasping a pathetic sounding no in the distance. Farmer Peters was speechless. At last, he had finally won the first prize after all the years of trying, and the feeling of satisfaction was even greater than he could have imagined. As if things could not get any better, young Flossie rushed over and planted a big kiss on the side of Farmer Peter's blushing face. <coughs> Celebrations went on for the rest of the day and long into the night, but as this is not important to this particular story, I will save you the detail. However, it is fair to say that Farmer Peter's, Spud and Larney had the most fantastic and memorable of days. Farmer Cooper and Old Man Peters had of course decided to make quite an early exit from the fair, but no one really seemed to notice. When Farmer Peters and his friends finally arrived back at the house, they were all clearly exhausted and ready for a long night's sleep. Farmer Peters opened the front door and stood there shocked as it swung open widely. In the centre of the room, the floorboards had all been lifted up and they scattered, leaving a large and dark round hole in the ground. Oh my! Farmer Peters gasped. We've been burgled! Look over there, Lani said, lifting a paw to point towards Old Man Peter's empty rocking chair, which was rocking gently. From behind it, there were a number of silhouetted figures huddled in the corner. Spud raced over to the shadows. Don't worry, these are my friends. Slowly but surely, twelve walking potatoes emerged from out of the darkness. In a quivering voice, the largest of the group beckoned towards Spud. The predictions have come true. The attacks have started. Spud 34,527, you must save us! <laughs> <laughs>